clipless or flats? Which pedal should you use to get the most out of your riding? It's a topic which always sparks debates here on GCN, and we love hearing from you lot about your positive experiences of both. But today, I am taking this discussion a little further. 100K on flats. Will this long ride change my mind about flat pedals? Only one way to find out. Ha <laughs> ha! The bike I'm using for my ride today is my Canyon Endurace. Normally I'd have it set up with my usual clipless pedals, so they allow you to fully fix your shoe in. But today I'm swapping them out for wide, strong metal flats with pins for grip and pairing them with a stiff-soled cycling-specific shoe. Solid ankle support and rigid design with the aim of helping pedaling style. Last year, in a previous video on the channel, we compared this setup with flat pedals on to my usual setup with clipless pedals over a series of short tests. A short hill climb, five kilometer flat effort, and a max power sprint. And surprisingly, we actually found that there was pretty minimal differences between each, aside from the sprint where the clipless pedals did have the upper hand. And indeed, there is research out there that points to this conclusion too, which finds there is no difference in pedaling efficiency between flat and clipless pedals. And it was also great to hear from all you guys too in the comment section where you shared your positive experiences of using flat pedals on your bike. I just feel the advantage of clipless pedals once you're used to them is that you don't have to worry about where your feet are. They're secure, they're fastened to your pedals, and it's just a case of hammering down on your legs and getting the ride done. And I think as I start to tire towards the end of the ride, that's where it really comes into its own because you're not worrying about your, your foot getting lost or having to readjust your position. But at the same time, I've been really pleasantly surprised with how flat pedals have performed in any of the GCM videos that we've created. And indeed, you folks have all said we need to do a long ride comparison of flat pedals and then give our honest opinion on what we think. So today is that day. I'm heading out on a winter epic. The pedals are flat, the feet are free. There's 100K, hopefully in the legs. I have to do a bit of pedaling first though. Not, not as much messing around. Yeah. My route today consists of a 33 kilometer lap, starting and finishing in the city of Bath. The reason for doing a lap on this ride, I'll explain fairly shortly, but obviously I'm gonna complete three laps to bring my ride up to 100 kilometers. And I'm hoping that I'm also gonna tackle Bathwick Hill, pretty well known climb here in this area. I'm gonna tackle it on each lap so hopefully give myself a realistic way of comparing my performance today on the flat pedals to my previous performances using clipless. And so I am off with an open mind, the road ahead of me and flat pedals beneath my feet. I'm so curious to see how this little experiment pans out at the end of this ride. So far, so good, 10K in. And I must admit, it's rather lovely. I feel like I've just stumbled across a nudist beach, thought about turning back, but actually ended up thinking maybe this could be a good idea. Whether I'll get a burnt bottom by the end of my sunbathing is another story, but we shall see, the ride goes on. 100K, flat pedals. Yoo-hoo! So about 25 kilometers in, so quarter of the way round. First impressions after I've kind of Got a bit under the belt, starting to feel a little bit of fatigue perhaps. Fairly good still, feeling good. I feel like my body's adapted to riding now. It's got over those kind of mid-winter wobbles. 
set itself into the groove and actually I'm not really noticing the flat pedals almost feels the same as if I'm riding normally I get this one one moment every now and again just at the top of the pedal stroke where I kind of would almost like to push the pedal forward or lift up which is what I'd probably be used to doing but aside from that I'm ticking along nice endurance aerobic pace I'm able to spin fairly well and there's been nothing really to report on yet So just coming up to 50 kilometers, about halfway, over two hours of riding in the bank. The weather's brightening up, it's good for morale. I'm still feeling pretty good, but I'm definitely noticing the odd, the odd sign of fatigue and tiredness creeping in. I'm still chugging away, still finding a decent rhythm on the pedals. And every now and then I kind of do lose them. And I feel I'm not quite pedaling in circles, but, I probably would feel like that anyhow at this time of the ride. So it's not at all doom and gloom. Still enjoying the flats. I'm still not thinking they're a hindrance. For now, all is well. It's actually surprisingly nice being in flats. It's quite, it's quite enjoyable. Honestly, I'm not, not really noting the difference. It's just uphill, you feel it, when you're kind of reaching for the pedals. Other than that, it's quite nice actually. You can like adapt to your position. So when you're not quite feeling right, you can just kind of move your feet around and I dig in and you get like another little groove to ride in. Quite enjoyed it. Massive headwind. Oh, I think my legs are going to be a bit tired after today. I am feeling them in places I wouldn't normally. My quads are pretty tired. Definitely gonna be putting myself under a lot of strain. Coming into the end of this ride. But to be honest, I'll be feeling like this either way. I think if you're riding a lot, it's still the advantage of clipping in. Like for me, I don't like my position changing all the time. I just feel like I'm getting it wrong a lot. I like to be able to dial it in. Whereas with flats, it's like quite a big difference. Like riding on your toes or maybe in the middle of your foot or you can go a bit wider on the pedal. And I'm, I'm riding asymmetrically a lot of the time. So one, one, foot, one shoe's out, the other's in. You readjust, but it isn't the same as being quite meticulous with your bike setup and actually dialing it in and knowing that's the position that worked on that ride. So I'm gonna replicate it on the future rides. I think that's where the disadvantage to flats lies. You just can't quite get that consistency that you need. I'm not yet convinced of flats, even though I've got nothing bad to say about them on this ride and they're coping with this hill supremely well, like a duck-billed platypus that's been unleashed from his rocky cave in the mountains. He sniffed some cat food. He's found his way. He's wheeling out of that cave, striking to the top of the hill. A duck-billed platypus no more but a super duck bill blood of us. <sighs> Tour de France is not long away. 
two thirds of the way through then, I'm dropping back down into the bar, ready to take on my final lap. And I've got to say, if I am picking holes, one area where I haven't been a fan of riding for that such a long period is on the descents. Very, very subtle difference. But I think because I'm so used to being clipped in the bike, when I'm at speed on rough roads, banking into corners, it does feel a little bit loose, not having my feet firmly planted on the pedals. I'm just so used to the movement of the bike and being able to, to, to use my foot position to adapt to handling. One more lap to go, then I'm gonna finish on this climb with one last fatigued effort. Oh, I can feel the legs starting to bite now. Ah, oh, right. Oh, I fell to that time, let's dig deep. There's a chap on an e-bike ahead of me and I just couldn't close the gap. Quads are screaming, calves are screaming. Four mines iffy. Got in the bag though, feeling good. Now for the final 25 kilometers. Let's finish this 100K. See what conclusions I can draw from this. Riding into the sunset. Not a bad evening to be out on a push bike. Always the highlights of a winter epic. Fishing on into the dark. Seeing the light fade and the colours come out in the sky. Look at that view. So I finished the 100K, it's in the bag, and I'm about as tired as you'd feel after a 100K ride. But I must admit, I do have a few more niggles than maybe I normally would. Just a little bit sore in places, and my knee and my groin. I think mainly just because I'm kind of stabilizing my position, I don't feel like I've got quite the same support. And I think that has cost me a little bit, but either way, I'm pushing on at the moment, finishing off one last climb to hopefully get some results and see how they compare my previous efforts. <laughs> right then, morning's broken. I've recovered from yesterday's ride and in actual fact, it's had a great time, a real winter epic. On flat pedals for a change, which is something I have not done in a long, long time. And I was actually looking at yesterday's ride as a bit of a challenge to try and complete on the flats. But in actual fact, I had a great time. I, I don't really feel that I was held back by being on these pedals compared to my usual setup. I felt comfortable. I felt like I could put the power down for this sort of ride. I felt like I could adapt to my position at times and, and not be feeling like I was, I was kind of being set back. I think that it would be quite hard to pick holes in the setup that I used, but I am going to pick a few holes. I'm going to pick a couple. I must say that I definitely felt a bit of fatigue start to creep into my muscles a little sooner than usual. And I was noticing small little niggles, which I wouldn't have experienced with my usual setup, mainly around my knees, groin area, places where I was kind of stabilizing my legs through that pedaling movement, because all these sort of micro adjustments were happening all the time. My feet weren't totally fixed. I did feel that, that started to, to pay a bit of a price on my overall feeling when I was pedaling. I think if I'd been properly fixed in as usual, yes, you, you tire, you fatigue, but because you're doing it in the same position every single day, it's like you begin to adapt, you begin to get used to that. And because you're not moving as much, you don't get those kind of small little niggles and bits of fatigue around, around those areas. So whilst I enjoyed using the flats and they were comfortable, I do feel that over time, they're not gonna quite be the same as clipless. And I, I, for that reason, 
this ride hasn't changed my mind about carrying on using clipless pedals. Although, it has changed my mind about flats because whilst I would have never used them before, and now I, I definitely would, I think for bike packing trips, rides that are of lower length, less intensity, perfect option. Wouldn't hold you back at all. And I was actually backed up by the fact that my time up Bathwick Hill, pretty similar. So I delved into the, the analysis and the stats. Time at the start of the ride and at the end of the ride, really comparative between both efforts from when I did it back in the summer on the same bike, but with clipless pedals. Really not that much in the difference. So it, they didn't slow me down. It was just the sensation and the feeling in my legs, which is a totally personal thing too. So that might change from person to person. So if you like using flats, carry on using them. They're not gonna slow you down, they're a great option. If you pair them with a good cycling specific shoe, metal pedal with pins for that grip, keeping your foot relatively in place, perfect. But if you do want to go to clipless pedals, there is an advantage to be had. Definitely in terms of performance at higher intensities. And if you're looking to ride multiple days back to back, I do think you're gonna be comfortable in the long term. That's my opinion though. And I'm willing to be rude prong in the comments once more. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful and we'll see you on the next one.